Good morning, everybody. This is Jim Hoffman. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown, Kansas City. It's Friday, and it is time for our daily devotion, so I want to invite you to come and join me. Let's take a moment to pause together as we take an opportunity to center ourselves on God's presence in our lives today. Looking forward to this moment where we can just share, so if you would please come and join me. As you find us on Facebook, if you would leave a quick comment and say hello, I would appreciate that. It's always nice to see those comments. I'll respond to them as well. If you are someone who watches later, don't forget to leave a comment as well. I will uh, I will look for those, and it's always nice to see who watches, even if it's later on in the day. Kind of a warm Friday out there, a little cloudy and sunny. Good old phone froze up. What else is new? So try to figure this out here a little bit. Maybe if I move it to something else. We'll, we'll, there we go. Hello, Mr. Dunbar. Good to see you this morning. Glad you are here. We're going to be reading from Revelation 21, so the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, chapter 21. We're going to read verses 3 through 5, so you might want to find that. Good morning, Shirley. Glad to have you today. Revelation 21, 3 to 5. Wait a couple of moments just to kind of get ourselves centered here, settled in. Tells me I've got a slow connection. I'm up at the office. I shouldn't have a slow connection. Ugh. What else is new? Revelation 21, verses 3 through 5. I think we're going to go ahead and get started, friends. Here's our opening prayer. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Revelation 21, verses 3 through 5 reads, I heard a loud sh shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. Our devotion writer today is David Cabasso. David is from Lusaka, Zambia. His focus verse is verse 4 that says, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the older things, older for the old order of things has passed away. Here is David's devotion for today. At the height of the pandemic... The whole world was in great turmoil as COVID-19 ravaged the globe, claiming millions of lives in the process. International travel was nearly impossible. During that same period, I was studying in the United States, and sadly, my dad passed away back in Africa. The pain of losing my father was almost unbearable. Then seven months later, my birth mother also died. The tragedy of losing both parents in the same year will live with our family for many years to come. 
After a while, I realized that my grief had taken a tremendous toll on me. I turned to the Word of God and to pray for comfort and strength. When I focused on God's love, I found comfort and assurance to help me through my grief. Now, whenever I am missing my parents, I think of the many good things they achieved, how they sacrificed for us, and how they loved us with the unconditional love of God. Scripture assures us that those who die in the Lord Jesus Christ will rise again, free from death and mourning, and that is worth celebrating. Thought for the day is God will always comfort those who mourn. I think of how often our spirituality can be reactive. We react to things that are going on in our lives, particularly troubling, kind, troubling kinds of things. I find it interesting the number of people who call themselves spiritual, but not religious. They consider themselves spiritual, but they don't really attend church. They may not necessarily be a part of a community. They might have community elsewhere, but they don't necessarily have a faith community they're a part of. And then one of life's tragedies comes because a life tragedy will come. It's just a matter of when. It's not if. It's always when. Uh, when one of those life tragedy comes, then all of a sudden folks turn back to God. And they wonder, maybe, where was God in the middle of all of this? Why didn't God do X, Y, or Z? We come with a set of expectations that I think, as Adam Hamilton says in his book on doubt, are, are a set of false expectations about God. And so we blame God in the middle of this. And, and we look for God to do something. So we want a remed an immediate reaction for God to do something because God is in control and God loves us. And so God's going to respond. And I think those are false expectations as well. Um, God does love us. God does want what is good for us. God is not necessarily going to intervene and super, you know, superintend upon or suspend the laws of nature on our behalf. God doesn't do that in particular. And so I think the better stance to this is, is don't turn to God all of a sudden in the middle of your trouble, but rather walk with God all of your life. So when troubles come, you will sense the presence of God with you. You will sense the presence of God who can wipe away every tear that you might have. You can sense the presence of God who will, who will make sure that you have no fear of death that you uh, will grieve and you will mourn because you're a person of hope. Uh, you will have an opportunity to, to learn in this moment, to understand in this moment, to experience in this moment truly how deep God's love is for you because you already know that God loves you. You already know that God is with you. And so rather than coming with the false expectations in a crisis moment, I think we're better off living in a healthy relationship with God all of our lives so that in the midst of those things, we don't turn to the false expectations, but rather turn to the truth of what we know. And that is that God loves us. God cares for us. God journeys with us. And God will send God's people to be our comfort as well. And so I think uh, the thing that we need to do, friends, is be people who are more faithful in our relationship with God, so that in those moments, when they do come, we're somewhat prepared for them, at least spiritually, and knowing that God loves us and is with us. So let's take a moment to, to think and pray. So we remember that God will always comfort those who mourn, and here is our prayer. Dear God, thank you for the peace you give to those who find themselves in grief. We pray for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones this day. We remember them and ask for your special blessing. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. By the way, good morning, Carol. Great to see you. Hi, Chris, and I'm going to assume Barbara's with you. Good morning to the two of you. I'm glad that both of you are here today as well. Uh, I want to invite you to do a couple things. Number one, as we finish this Facebook post, Feel free to share this on your own Facebook page if you would like. Uh, if you would, as someone who watches this later on, don't forget, leave a quick comment as well. 
Take a moment to pause and pray today if you haven't already. Pray for one another. Pray for me. I am praying for you. And then don't forget, come and join us for our um, devotions tomorrow. Um, I will be at um, the graveside service for Shirley Walker over at Mount Moriah. So Allie is going to be our host tomorrow. Come and join her if you would, please. And then again, uh, come back and join us on Monday as well. Don't forget worship on Sunday. Find your place, your community. Go be with your people. Take an opportunity to pause and worship God who loves you and who is walking with you. Thanks for being here today, friends. A joy to spend this moment with you. Thanks for taking the opportunity to center yourselves on God's presence. I hope you feel the deep uh, sense and love and abiding presence of God today. And I'm praying for his rich grace and peace to be upon you. Thanks for